This episode of Story Comic Presents is sponsored by JanusPointPress.com. Watch out for wormholes. Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 328. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're excited to have back with us the internationally acclaimed and talented comic creator of Plague Doctor Press, Mark Bell. After two what? years. It was two I know, years Mark. ago that I was on that show, on your show. I know. I know you're you're you came on to, talking about Spirit, your 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 comic book series, which I I read the first two issues and it was fantastic. Oh, thank I you. Love the, I love the feel of it, and I know when you're on two years ago, you're promoting it. It was inevitable. I said I, I'm going to back this, so this is absolutely I had to go ahead and back it. And since then, you've been very busy over the last couple of years. As, we were talking before we went up. We live. You have a very successful podcast. You also just came out with a Stranger Ranger, but you're also here to talk about Spirit issue number three, which is yep. now live as a Kickstarter. Yep. Uh, so what happened was Spirit two backed successfully with the last time I was on, and uh, Melissa Caprione, uh, the artist I work with, was doing a fantastic job, and then. Uh, she signed a contract with dark horse to do a graphic novel and um i don't have dark horse money so they moved <laughs> to the front of the line which is a-okay i was absolutely fine with it uh so melissa finished her graphic novel called basil and oregano which everyone should pick up already it's young women at a magical cooking school like how it's just delightful uh -huh. and then she finished off spirit number two uh and i i sort of spent the year selling it at conventions and it went over gangbusters but i wanted to expand my ip because if you have only a small amount of titles on your table you're not serving as many people as you can right right um so i wanted to do a kickstarter before between Spirit 2 and Spirit 3. And I wanted to do uh, another idea. And I threw around a bunch of ideas over, it was like last spring I was working on this. And finally I came across this idea that I had in my pocket for a long time, which was Strange Ranger. Now, mm. This originally started as a video game huh. because during the pandemic, I wanted to learn how to code better because I'm a programmer and a coder. I usually do mostly web stuff. So I wanted to sort of just polish up my chops. And as well, I wanted, I knew if I had a project during the pandemic, it would make it better for me. Right. Um, because I'm an extroverted guy, I'm always needed to be doing something. So this was a massive project that I undertook. And I essentially took my two favorite video games at that point, which was a game called um, Stardew Valley, which is a farming social sim, which I really love and played for years, and put it together with a large environment survival game called the long dark, which is a very different game, but I wanted to create, <laughs> I wanted to create these, these big environments to explore. Cause that's what I really like in games is exploring right. these environments. So I worked oh, six, eight months on strange ranger, the game and got it to the point where I was building quest systems and things like that. And then I got a job. So I was like, well, I can program at work. <laughs> I don't need to program at home. <laughs> and making a game is a really difficult thing, especially on mm. your own. Right. And so I sort of, I didn't, I still have the files. I could pick it up and start working on it tomorrow. I didn't get rid of it, but I just kind of put it on the back burner. 
And I think it was at Indie Comic Con, my wife said, well, what about if you did Strange Ranger as a comic? And I was like, oh, that's an idea. So the idea came out of the game, but I wanted a female, strong female character lead. That's what I wanted. That's Agatha Wayne right there. And I wanted um, a young woman who was on her first job. So she is solely responsible for this imaginary park. It's not a state park. It's not a national park. It's a park. You know, Mm -hmm. it it exists in that magical sort of place. And uh, I wanted it all ages. And I wanted it to be a little more um, adventure-y and a little more supernaturally (laughs) than than, uh, Spirit has. Because Spirit has a vibe, and I'm really glad that... Melissa and I have a really good handle on that vibe, but I just wanted to do something slightly different. So I came up with this on this concept of this young woman in her first job. And I reached out to an artist named Janssen Carbonell. He's a young man from the Dominican Republic who does okay. just gorgeous artwork. Right. And I pitched him the idea and he was like, I love this. And <laughs> So we worked together on getting that going and we kickstarted that. So Indie Comic Con was like in May and by the middle of July, we had uh, started the, the Kickstarter. And okay. that, that uh, Kickstarter was successful. And because of that, um, I've had to set up so that i have to print spirit number one for a third time so to fulfill (laughs) spirit number two i had to do another printing of spirit number one because people like to buy one and two if they don't have any right they don't like two they want to buy one and two right so i had to do another printing which is just if so next month december of uh 20 It would be 2018. December 2018 is when I started Plague Doctor Press. If you had told me in December 2018, I was going to go into my third printing because the Spirit 3 Kickstarter and the Strange Ranger Kickstarter, I got to do another printing of Spirit number one already. (laughs) Uh, if If I had gone into, told me I was going into the third printing of Spirit number one, I would have been like, you're that's just not possible. I couldn't sell that many (laughs) comics, but I have. So spirit, uh, strange ranger was a huge success. Um, I think it brought a bunch of new readers to spirit as well as bringing a bunch of new readers, uh, from strange ranger to spirit number three, like it, it's growing that. And, uh, the artwork and i've talked a lot about this to a lot of people when you put jonson's artwork beside melissa's artwork they look like they go together but they're not the right. same right yeah exactly and that i am so glad i have that because now my table at a convention has spirit one two and three it has It'll have Strange Ranger number one, possibly number two, because I'm crazy on the Kickstarters now, it seems. And then, um, and Zed, which I've done as an omnibus now. So this is all the Zed uh, web comics put in one book with the covers. And I printed it in manga size on um, paper that, looks like it's the thinnest paper so it's kind of like a an old time archie comic and it has that coloring too which is what i always wanted that comic to be like so so now i have i'll i'll have four four full size 32 page books on my table plus this book that any kid can come up to my table and look at 
that any young woman can approach my table and see women on the cover of all my books. That any young person of color can come to my comic, uh, come to my table and see people of color in my comics. Right. And that that is exactly what I wanted to have. Um, there's there's been a lot of talk lately uh, in the Kickstarter community about adult books doing very well. And I am in no way against adult books. I've backed some really good adult books with great art in it. But being an all ages publisher on Kickstarter sets me apart now. Right. So, and, and that again is the end goal is to get more people into comic book shops, into comics, into making comics and to reading comics. Right. And I, this is my way into this. So strange Ranger was successful. Janssen's already done the inks. He's half done the colors. I can't believe how fast he works. Um, and we are on to spirit number three, and Melissa's already done some amazing artwork for this. Spirit number three is another self-contained story, but it's even more than a self-contained story. It's in it's a story in a day. Uh, if you remember, there was a movie in the uh, 80s about a young group of boys who uh, go to see a body called Stand By Me. Yeah, it, this is very Stand By Me influenced. Okay, but but instead of going to see a body, um, what happens is the spirit characters who are sign of supernatural investigators, while trying to find Bigfoot, find a hurt Bigfoot. Watch out for wormholes, because a good book is a wormhole, whether it's paper or pixels. Explore our artist books and chat books, including the winning 2022 Chautauqua Janus Prize Lecture at JanusPointPress.com. And sign up for news of our upcoming sci-fi, sensual, and literary collection, Event Horizon. This short story collection on cosmic decisions and their impact is written by award-winning author Stephanie Nina Pizzarillos and features comics, prose, photography, and original canvas work by an array of exciting artists. Visit JanicePointPress.com. For those that might have missed me we were on a couple of years ago, do you want to just briefly explain what issue number what spirit is about, what it stands for, the characters, and also what happened in issue number one and two then? Okay. Okay. So yeah. spirit is uh spirit is scientific paranormal incident research investigation team. It's a teen <laughs> team yeah. of young teen girls, they're juniors in high school. Uh, named Ada, Mary, and Jane, who, along with their new friend that they meet in issue number one of Spirit, Ash, uh, use their YouTube channel to disprove supernatural events. Well, that story is great alone, but when you add into the fact that supernatural events actually happen in the comic and they're faced to deal with supernatural occurrences... In the first issue, it's Ghost. In the second issue, it's Psychics. In the third issue, it's Sasquatch. Fourth issue is going to be UFOs. So uh, it, all that stuff is fun, and it makes for uh, a, a comic in which there is conflict that isn't based around who's kissing or who's dating who, because I didn't right. necessarily want that. And it's not a conflict around, um, it's a it's a debate amongst the characters about what is going on, what's real, what's not real, how does this work? And that goes, that sort of skepticism, skepticism is something I also want to promote in people as much as possible, you know? Okay. And so... Uh, in the first issue, they are presented with ghosts and resolve the conflict between them and the ghost in a nonviolent manner. In the second issue, they're 
uh, a friend of theirs is or their grandmother is being taken advantage of by a, a false psychic, like a fake psychic in town. Right. And this fake psychic has taken advantage of this poor girl's mother, a uh, grandmother. And so they use their resources and intelligence to, to basically catch this person out and uh, expose her for the fraud that she is. Mm. And then uh, issue number three, as I mentioned, the girls, while searching for Sasquatch, find a young Sasquatch who is hurt and is transgendered also. So this young Sasquatch character needs to meet with their parents at an, at an appropriate time. Uh, and so the girls, the, the girl characters from Spirit help this Sasquatch to get, meet uh, their parents. Okay. Now, they're also being pursued by some cryptid hunters who are hot on the trail of the Sasquatch. So <laughs> that's the sort of pursuit excitement portion of the, the uh, story. Talk to us a little bit about the, uh, what, what people can expect on the Kickstarter then. So in the Kickstarter, uh, what is available are a couple of things. One, you can get this issue of spirit, uh, in digital and uh, print form. Okay. Or you can get all of Spirit, one, two, and three in digital or print form. Okay. There's also a level in which you can get all the Plague Doctor Press books. So you get Strange Ranger, you get Zed, and you get uh, the three spirit books both in digital and print are available oh, yeah um other things that we're offering is um one of the postcard artists from spirit 2 mauru devilos uh who the, if you scroll down there's a picture by her it's the picture of the girls lying on the ground that is uh, my most popular postcard by far. People really like that po postcard at shows. So I'm getting her to do um, these special kind of stickers that are called oh, cool. Pixie Dust Glitter Stickers, which are just <laughs> fun. <laughs> How can that not be fun? Uh, so there's a sticker set available as well as Melissa doing commissions. Um, okay. We did have one large uh reward that was already taken because essentially the story starts with them being pursued by sasquatch they think they're being pursued by sasquatch but they are actually oh, not okay. and one of the characters says um it all started back at the comic book store now <laughs> there there's two things that happen here one, and we talked about this the last time I was on the show. I'm a huge proponent of local comic book stores. Go to your local right. comic book store. Support your local comic book store. Well, I've gone so far as putting my local comic book store in the comic. So oh, wow. my, lo my local comic book store and the owner are going to be in the comic. And uh, my number one backer is also going to be in the store and uh, him and his daughter are going to appear and uh, and actually contribute to the issue too. And he's everybody's huh. super excited about that. Um, so that is what's available right now. Now, if you know me, I like to do stretch goals, of course, and we're going to announce some stretch goals soon because we're getting close to seventy percent on the Kickstarter. Um, I think. You might see a Janssen Carbonell uh, variant cover. You might see, nice. uh, you might see a uh, Sasquatch maybe sticker that is a stretch gold, so everybody would get that sticker of the Sasquatch. And uh, you know, uh, I'm all about read more comics, 
make more right. comics. So you might see some stickers or pins that have those ideas on them as well. But I'm keeping them under wraps just a little bit. So, right. And so, so talk to us a little bit about just like the, the process, like the timeline and, and, and whatnot. As you mentioned, uh, she's already working on the issue, right? Yeah, so- she's already working on the issue and uh, her major project for next year got delayed. So it's actually a perfect time for us. Um, and it's, you know, it. I'm so lucky to work with Melissa. She did a dark horse book since we talked last she's doing books that i know she's doing that we can't talk about that you should have her on the show too because she's going to be doing some amazing books um but i i remember when i i asked her about jansen's artwork and what she thought of it because it's very important to me that everybody who i work with likes everybody else and you know right her opinion is really important to me and she was like that's great he's not allowed to do spirit (laughs) (laughs) i was like well i was thinking maybe he'd do another story and she's like that's good because i'm the only one who does spirit (laughs) (laughs) i was like okay (laughs) that's fantastic yeah um so that leads me to think and my pipeline of my parts of things like the writing the lettering the production my i this is this will be my fourth time through it i know it better i know what needs to go into it i know the time it takes now Mm -hmm. so like i'm already lettering strange ranger i'm about half done the letters already on strange ranger so when i get the final color pages for strange ranger we should be able to go to print pretty soon after that i think before the end of this year i might go to print on strange ranger Mm. which means i you know i think maybe by april we can get uh spirit two done uh spirit three done um Indie Comic Con this year's in March. I don't think I'll have Spirit 3 for then, but I will have Strange Ranger by then for sure. So it's just, it it is, it's two things. It's production and it's printing. If you hit printing at the right time, they're like three weeks and you can have your books. And if you hit it at the wrong time, they're like, we're backed up two and a half months. You know, it just, right. it, it, I really like the printer I use. It's called Comics Wellspring. They have done such a good job. Um, when I printed uh, Spirit number one on a second printing, the guy who ran the store called me up. He's like, so glad to see you're doing a second printing, you know. Um, and I don't do big print runs, but I felt like they actually cared about what I was doing. And that means that they're going to be careful printing my books. And so is, um, so a strange ranger and spirit, is this in the same, like literal universe or are they two separate stories altogether? Well, I'm not going <laughs> to let anything come out quite yet about that (laughs) well i think the fact that you said it kind of answered the question so uh there's a there's a a fun little thing in strange ranger that'll give you the the answer to that so essentially the one of the characters esme is a shape shift shape changing character and Mm -hmm. she changes into a number of shapes at one point in the episode now in the issue now two of those shapes are pay, uh, people who bought those rewards they appear in the comic one of them was one of my best friends when i was a kid another uh guy had his daughter appear but uh maybe one of the spirit characters shows up there too <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's not uh, beyond the realm of possibility. And I don't know if you noticed. Uh, so Spirit 2 has uh, some Easter eggs in it. On this page, that's the basil and oregano poster up there. Oh, from, cool. And then uh, this is the Zed poster right there. Okay. And oh, this is Falconhurst, which is um, Melissa's webcomic. So I'm a big fan of Stephen King's Everybody's in the Same Universe. So I kind of like that idea. And if I was to give you a hint of where to look next, uh, this the comic book shop has some comics behind the uh, the uh, counter that are Plague Doctor Press yet to be announced releases. Really? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so are you trying to give? So with with Melissa, are you trying to give her um, knowing that her other project is delayed? Are you going to try to? push out issue number four written for her to start working on then before she has a more coming up? I don't know. Um, I, I'm going to do strange ranger two next. Yeah. And then I may do, and I, I have numbers to run because what I'd like to do is I've always envisioned there be five issues in the, first year of the first kind of season of spirit so there's ghosts psychics sasquatch ufos and then the last one is witches um i would like those all put together and in a trade because right. trades are easier to get to multiple distribution output right. uh, spots right like Floppies are great if I go into the store or I'm at a con. Floppies are great. But if I'm contacting, like, just off the top of my head, Emerald Comics in uh, Seattle, they love right. my books, but they want to trade. Yeah. Like, they want to so, trade. So I may wait. do the next Kickstarter being issues four and five together. And you have the option to buy the trade. Because you're looking at, like, right now, to being generous, you'd be coming out with an issue a year then of Spirit. So, yeah. so, so with issue number three coming out in 2024, you're looking at then 2025, 2026 maybe having a trade coming out. If I don't do four and five together. Right. And then offer a trade as a... A reward tier. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I was on, I talked a lot about artists should be paid and they absolutely should be paid. But every time I print the comic, it's cheaper, right? Every right. every printing of the comic makes that investment go down. Right. So I may be able to do those four and five together uh, knowing that I have enough people who are interested in the trade. Right. Um, because the trade will be like, close to 200 pages right and that's a that's a good size trade and um but it all depends on really it depends on how well strange ranger 2 does and how well it sells at cons right because i i take all that money uh from cons and put it back into the comics i'm a, i'm a zero sum Right. situation and like one the indie comic-con last year i made enough to print another run of, of spirit like i made i did that well at that con right. and more right. books on my table mean i'm gonna do better at these cons so right so hopefully you know i might be able to do that and i'd really like to to do that and i think melissa would like to get to that point too and then we can figure out we would like to do their senior year of high school as a trade right off the bat right okay because we had yeah. we would have raised enough interest and network and things like that 
to raise that much money to pay her for for a larger book right yeah so cool so so mark so if people want to learn more about plague doctor press and your work where is the best place they could go to so the best place to go is plague doctor press.com okay. um on and to follow me on twitter instagram and i'm calling it twitter because that's what it is <laughs> uh, twitter instagram and uh facebook in addition joining our mailing list helps a ton um right. now if you join my mailing list i'm not going to send you daily mail i'm not that guy i i send one a month <laughs> because i have two newsletters that i do monthly which <laughs> is insane on it's on the surface of it anyway so uh, i do one comic book uh newsletter a month and uh that keeps you up to date on what we're doing and the latest things that we have available um and where i'm gonna be because people seem to like coming out and talking to me when they know i'm gonna be in the area so and as we said as of this recording you do have Spirit number three is live and we'll leave, we'll, we'll link it in the show notes for those that might be listening to this six months from now. And they'll, they hear about this. You can still be able to go to the link and there'll be like a follow along button or something along those lines as well. Yeah. Um, if you go to the link after we're done, it'll either link to the latest Kickstarter or late uh, link to the store where you can uh, buy it. I'm, I'm actually going to, I know, these words are going to come out of my head December and January. I'm going to take a break <laughs> and uh, do an update to the store, my shop and things like that. Cause I have a bunch of stuff that I have been selling at cons that I haven't been able to get on the shop just because oh, wow. I haven't had time. So yeah. stickers and buttons and pins and all sorts of things. So, because right. people like those things at shows like, and, and at a table at a show, um, you want, you don't want, you want a variety of prices on your things because right. a little girl comes up and she just wants a button, you know, yeah. she may not be able to, I, my comics have a $10 pro, uh, cover price, which is a steep price for a little kid at, at first, you know, right. um, but then they open the book and they're like, Hey mom, can I get this comic? <laughs> Cause it's really cool. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Well, perfect. Listen, Mark, you can, don't be a stranger, man. It's been a couple of years. You come back on more often. This has been great. I, I will gladly come back on more often and maybe uh, we should have uh, Melissa or Janssen come on and talk about uh strange ranger three or spirit four. In the yes, future. absolutely. That'd be great. So thank you so much for all the work you do. You certainly are putting out excellent content. And I, I watched a few of your videos today. The elephant eater one was just, like, I cannot wait to get my hands on that book. That I am a pinball fanatic. And so is he. I'm like, I want that book in my hands because it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Ryan's a fun guy to talk to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you and have a great night. And it was so good talking to you again, Barney. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Wow, it's it's amazing what we've done. We've had people from Midsummer on the show now. Yeah. Who say that people from the show listen to our podcast. Um that's we, amazing. Yeah, we we asked a question about Father Brown on one podcast and the showrunner from Father Brown got a hold of us and came on the show and ex and answered our questions, which was <laughs> that's awesome. Insane. <laughs> so yeah we had annette badland from the show she's also on um 
Ted Lasso. So okay. we had her. She was absolutely lovely woman. Right. Fantastic guest on the show. Oh, cool. All right. Which one was she in Ted Lasso? She's, she runs the bar in Ted Lasso. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. She's <laughs> absolutely.